some of those areas. And of course, that underlying economic stuff is very important. Yep. Forever Chapel's in to say hello. Hi, I am, and I'm all ready to go. That's fabulous. Hi, Samia. Hi, Trevor. Are you in Reading? Yeah, yeah. Oh, good. You're invading our space, Trevor. Just get on with it. Look out, because I'm coming through. <laughs> hey, good luck. Any parent knowing exactly what their teenagers are up to. Oh, no. oh, yeah. Yeah, you know where yours will be. They'll be on the floor. <laughs> doing what their father wants them to do. I mean the surfboards. Hey, we had a question last week. Why is it that um, priests and religious people wear the white collar? Uh, that, uh, that goes back to that. Uh, you should have asked Noel when he was here last week. He could have mm. told you that. No, well, the question got asked last week, and I didn't know. We didn't oh. get an answer. Well, look, we'll make sure we sort of find one for you. Why oh. the dog collar? What's the yeah. origin of the clerical dog collar? Yeah. We'll, we'll get one for you. Well, we might get a listener to ask. Okay, we'll get a listener to answer it, and that'll, that'll help me. Yeah, we got all caught up last week talking about stoves, of all things, about talking about argus, and it just went on and on and on. So we're not talking about them this week. I mean, do you, do you have an argus stove when you were a little hideaway? away? No, not as far as I know. It cost about 10,000. Uh, they do, <laughs> yeah. Jay, primitive on a wood stove, yes. Yeah. $20,000. we got all sorts of stuff in the program. Lovely stuff. Trevor Chapel coming up overnight with any questions you'd like to know the answer of. Samina, thank you. says it's willing to exempt grandparents and some single parents from its overhaul of family welfare payments. The Treasurer Scott Morrison has told News Corp he's willing to come to a re reconciliation with Labor over changes to family tax benefits. But the opposition leader Bill Shorten says the coalition shouldn't be rewarded for changing its stance. The government needs to make the case better than it has. You know, again, when I'm not from turbulence, the stopped on banks. Up on New South Wales police say they are back on high alert in the search for fugitive Gino and Mark Stocko. Two sightings of the men on Saturday have been confirmed, one in Gundagai in the state south and the other in the Victorian town of Sale. Detective Inspector Darren Croak says the men will face a number of charges, the most serious being attempted murder after shooting at police on two occasions. From that police shooting, obviously one of the projectiles went through the, uh, the front of the police motor vehicle. Um, it was fortunate that the projectile deflected off one of the internal brackets inside the car, but it could have been fatal. Certainly in the second shooting incident, a number of cartridges or shots were fired from this floor in the direction of the police. European Union leaders will meet with the leaders of Albania, Serbia and Macedonia in Brussels today to discuss the refugee crisis. Hungary's decision to close its borders with Serbia and has prompted other countries to follow suit, stranding tens of thousands of people. The EU is considering sending more than 400 border guards to the western Balkan region. The group will also look at ways to speed up returning people home when asylum claims are rejected. Citizens of Argentina will take to the polls to elect a new president as Cristina Fernandez de Kirchner stands down after eight years in power. BBC's Wire Davis reports. As Ms. Fernandez de Kirchner's handpicked successor, Daniel Scioli is favoured to win this election. He is being pushed hard by the centre-right candidate, Mauricio Macri. The ruling party's critics say Argentina's economy is in trouble and a country can't afford President Kirchner's popular but extensive welfare programmes. Whoever emerges as the next president, there are challenges ahead. A deal will have to be done with Argentina's international creditors and the country's farming sector, which says it is being taxed far too much. People voting in presidential elections in the Ivory Coast with the incumbent Alassane Ouattara are hoping to secure a second term of office. Several opposition candidates have pulled out, complaining the process has not been free nor fair. Meanwhile, Tanzanians have turned out in large numbers to vote in presidential and parliamentary elections. The polls are expected to be the most closely fought since the governing CCM party took power more than 50 years ago. Back home and traditional owners of the Uluru Katajuda National Park in Central Australia are commemorating 30 years since the iconic heritage site was returned to them. Diana Damjanovic reports. In 1985, the federal government gave the park and the national icon of Uluru back to the Anunu people under the Aboriginal Land Rights Act. Local Aboriginal people will celebrate the return later today and are also marking a decade of a program that uses tourism profits generated by the sacred site 
for social development in the Indigenous communities. The Ananu people plan on holding a ceremony at the swimming pool in Mutajulu this morning, which is funded by Aboriginal Tourism Operations and has helped lift primary school attendance rates. The Wallabies are playing for their first Rugby World Cup final spot in 12 years as the Australian team takes on Argentina at Twickenham. The return of Israel Folau and David Pocock has added significant strength to the side that narrowly edged out Scotland in the quarterfinals just shy of a week ago. So far, the Wallabies are undefeated in the competition, while the Pumas have only suffered one loss at the hands of New Zealand. The winner of the match will play the All Blacks for the Webb Ellis Cup. The loser will go into the bronze medal match against South Africa. And in motor racing, Holden star James Courtney says he's learning to adapt after returning from serious injury with a victory at the Gold Coast 600. The 35-year-old had been sidelined with a punctured lung and broken ribs after being struck by debris sent flying by a Navy helicopter in Sydney. Rick Kelly came second, while Gautkar Tanda finished a third. And now to check Monday's forecast. Brisbane possible showers in 29. Sydney showers developing and a possible storm, 29 the high as well. Canberra showers developing in 27. A few showers for Melbourne with a high of 17. Hobart's an early shower or two and 14 degrees. Adelaide partly cloudy in 22. Perth partly cloudy in 27. And Darwin mostly sunny and 34. For more news anytime, head to ABC News online, abc.net.au slash news. Action. Hello, I'm Virginia Triol. And I'm Michael Rowland. Every morning on your telly, ABC News just kicks off your day. Serving up the stories and starting the conversations that matter. What we have today is a 21st century government. From whatever's being talked about. The Australian dollar. To what's about to be talked about. Do you have a scoop? It's a very rare thing in the history of the game. We have all the facts you need. Another hailstorm. And a little bit of fun. <laughs> Start your day with ABC News. Every morning on your telly. Weekday mornings from 6. Six minutes after two o'clock, six minutes after one in Queensland, six minutes after eleven. For our listeners in Western Australia, uh, it's a Monday morning. So if you've never joined us on a Monday morning, it's the day that you set the agenda. You tell us exactly what you want to talk about. In that, you give us a ring and ask us questions, and we find answers for you. It's that simple. And all you got to do is ring one three hundred eight hundred triple two. Yeah. Oh, good question. See, they're already coming in. The questions you can. Send them in by text. Or you can bring up any questions. G'day, Trev. Why should you never look a gift horse in the mouth? Where does that thing come from? And what the heck does it mean? Says Super Trucker. This is what we do on a Monday morning. You give us questions that you're not too sure about that you've always wondered, and we find an answer. As Gay has done from WA. Hi, Trevor. What's the origin of the Jack in the Union Jack flag, and why is it called a Jack? Another question. One three hundred eight hundred triple two. That's what you have to do. You just have to ring up and we find answers for you. Last week we had a heap. One of the questions that we didn't get answered 